I ask you to keep what you are about to read and hear to yourself since it's regarding an illegal activity I was once engaged in. Until I was about 16 years old, my parents, my younger sister and I had visited my grandparents' home every year during the New Year's. Limited for that time of the year, a quiet countryside house of my grandparents would turn into a family casino. It consisted of three different areas. In the card game area, which was the living room, a card game called Kaba that is similar to blackjack would be played. In the coin game area, which was my grandparents' room, would be for a game called Mortar Roller. And the break area, which was the dining room, would be for those who didn't like gambling or who needed food and drink. It would be open for 24 hours but only the family members could play. The coin game was organized by my grandmother. She set up a huge china mortar for sesame on the tatami floor and the players would sit around it on the floor. They would take turns and roll a 10 yen coin, which is worth about 10 cents, inside the mortar. The coin rolled along the side of the round mortar, descending gradually toward the bottom. If it landed on other coins at the bottom, the player could get them. Although the game was simple, we would be absorbed in playing and our heads and eyes were rolling with a coin above the mortar. My cousin was good at it with her own devised technique to throw in a coin. I would also win snugly with my fixation on money. Beside the excited circle, my grandfather and my father, who were not interested in gambling, would talk over Japanese tea that my grandfather would make. My grandmother would start fretting after midnight and tell us to be quiet because she had believed that the military policemen could bust in with bayonets. We laughed at her anachronism while seeing her try to meet the mortar and still live the World War II era. She upgraded the mortar one year by putting a round piece of cardboard near the bottom. The mortar's floor was raised and became wider and flatter so that it was harder to make the coin lie on top of the other. More coins to take would be left at the bottom and the game got more exciting. Those were such fond memories and I can still hear the sound of a rolling coin inside a mortar during New Year's. Later on, the joyful grandparents' house was burned down by my grandmother's carelessness with a candle. It's gone forever. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. It's about a strange sister I encountered back in my school days. Since I became the class clown at school, I was quite popular back then, not only among the students but also among the teachers. When I needed to see a teacher at the hallway in front of the teacher's office, other teachers would come out of the office to talk with me. They would stand in a circle around me and laugh at my jokes and stories. Inevitably, it was always noisy wherever I showed up. The vice principal was a stern, rigid teacher called Sister Mari Stella. She was the oldest sister at school and dressed in a traditional, old-fashioned Catholic gown. She was strict to students and teachers alike. Everybody tried to keep away from her because she always reproved someone for something. She would appear wherever people were buzzing, to shut them up. She had recognized that I was often a seismic center of the buzz and given me a look of you again. Every time the teachers were cracking up with me in front of the teacher's office, she poked her long bailed head out of the office. That was a signal for the end of the show. Teachers would disperse quickly while I stopped talking. Sometimes we failed to notice her and she stood behind the circle listening to me. The moment someone spotted her, they would walk away. In those cases, she would ask me what I was talking about. I would apologize and leave. And one thought occurred to me. She didn't come out to reprove us she might want to join us. Even after I realized that, I had no way to keep talking once other teachers ran away. As a result, we just kept leaving when she came up. And one day, when we were scattering at the sight of her as usual, she grabbed my arm. She said to me, that's it. You hate me, don't you? I know you hate me. I know, because I hate you too. Over her shoulder was a statue of the Virgin Mary with a plaque saying love and humanity. It was the most inconsistent scene I had ever experienced. Months later, there came a general school cleaning day. I was unlucky enough to be assigned to the school cafeteria of which Sister Mari Stella took charge. As if she got a golden opportunity, she made a slave of me. She chose the dirtiest floor just for me and made me crawl to clean up thoroughly, yelling not enough. Do it over. Repeatedly. I felt her revenge so strongly. Given the hatred and now the revenge, 
I deepen the mystery of Catholic sisters. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total.